Welcome to this predictive paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. Okay, so we're going to start by writing this out a little bit bigger, give us a bit more space. So it's minus 6x is less than 60. And we're going to do our tram lines down. And we're going to start by um, dividing both sides by minus 6. Because that's what this is doing. It's times in the x by minus 6. So we're going to divide both sides by minus 6. So that gets rid of the minus 6 on the left hand side. And it's going to be 60 divided by minus 6, which will be minus... 10. Now we've got to be really careful here because whenever you times or divide both sides by a negative you must switch the inequality. So instead of pointing to the left it's now going to point to the right. So our answer is x is greater than minus 10. So this question says that Adrian, Ben and Charlie have some sweets and the ratio of Adrian to Ben to Charlie is is 9 to 6 to 13 but it also says that Charlie got 56 more sweets than Adrian so there's 56 more sweets well looking at the actual um, parts of the ratio there are four more parts so plus four parts which represent plus 56 sweets so the four extra parts are worth 56 sweets. So four parts are worth 56 sweets. So one part would be 56 divided by four, which is 14 sweets. So all we need to do now is work out how many parts there are. Well, there are nine plus six plus 13 parts, uh, which is 28. And each part is worth 14 sweets. So the total number of sweets will be 28 times 14. So 28 times 14 is 392. So factorize means to put it into a bracket. And it looks like it's a quadratic here, um, but it's actually just a linear factorizing um, because we don't have a number term. So we're going to just use one bracket for this. And looking at these terms, I'm going to focus first on the numbers. So 20 and 30, I can divide both of those by 10. And that will leave uh, 2 and 3. So that's the numbers done. Next, I'm looking at the t terms. We've got t squared there and a t there. So we can divide out a t, but that will leave a t on the first term and finally I'm going to look at the u and there's just a u on both of them I can factorize out and actually that just leaves nothing on the inside of the bracket now always when you do this expand the bracket to check if you've made any mistakes so I'm going to do smiles and rainbows there's loads of different methods so 10 times 2 is 20 t times t is t squared and then the u plus 10 times 3 is 30, times t times u. So we know we've got the right answer. So our answer is 10tu brackets 2t plus 3. To find the exterior angle of any polygon, we do 360 divided by the amount of sides. These are decagons, which means they have 10 sides. So the exterior angles will be 36 degrees. And the exterior angle is just an angle that kind of continues on, you just continue on from the side. So this one here is the exterior angle of the left hand decagon and this one here is the exterior angle on the right hand decagon. So altogether um, the angle A will be 36 plus 36 which will be 72. So our answer will be 72 degrees. So we know that the um, exterior angle 
is equal to 360 divided by the amount of sides, which we can just call n. And something you can do is actually just swap these two things around. And we can say that the n, the amount of sides, is 360 divided by the exterior angle for a regular polygon. So we just do 360 <clears throat> divided by 5, and that gives us 72. When something is cubed, you times it by itself three times. So we're going to do the same here. So we've got 5x to the power of minus 6 times 5x to the power of minus 6 times 5x to the power of 6. We're going to put the 5s together. So 5 times 5 times 5 and the x to the power of minus 6 is together. Five times five times five is 125. Now when you times powers with the same base, which we have here, because they're all um, x to the power of uh, minus six, um, you add the powers together. So minus six plus minus six plus minus six, which is gonna be minus 18. Something else we could have done is we could have done five to the power of the three here, 125, and then done minus six times the three, which would have given us minus 18. So with each of these uh, pools, try and imagine it being filled. So pool A, first of all, we've got water coming into it, and it's actually gonna go quite quickly initially, and then it will hit a point at the end where actually it'll go really quite slowly because it's a wider pool. So we would imagine that the graph for pool A would actually go quite quickly at the start, and then at the end it would go much slower. And that doesn't really describe, the, the graph, the red graph doesn't really describe that at all. So for pool B, we start off actually quite quickly, because it's, um, it's quite thin, and then we have a wider bit here, so it will go slower here, and then we go quickly again. So we need a graph that starts off quite quickly, then goes slowly, and then goes quickly. And the steeper the graph on our depth time graph, the faster it's filling up. And that red line doesn't really describe that either. Pool C, however, we can see it goes slowly at the start. And then because it's thin, it will go quicker. So nice quickly. And then it will go slowly again. Well, that is a perfect description of the graph that we're given. So the graph we're given is definitely going to be for pool C. To find the gradient, we need to find two points we know on this graph. So I'm going to pick that coordinate and this coordinate here. And we know that we need to draw a right angle triangle between them. And we find the gradient by the change in y, which is 3, over the change in x. But notice the change in x is 1, so it's going to end up being 3 divided by 1, which is just 3. So a different definition of the gradient is for every 1 we go to the right, how far up we go, which is three. So we can't work out length CE directly, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by finding length BC. And I'm gonna do that using trigonometry. Um, so we've got the 90 degrees there. Um, so it will be, well, we'll start by labeling it. So BC is the hypotenuse, um, the opposite here and adjacent here. We're not using the adjacent. So we're going to just do our Sokatoa, Sokatoa, and we've crossed out the A, so we cross out these two, so it's going to be sine. So we know that sine 79 equals the opposite, which is 29 over the um, BC. So I'm going to put my solving lines in, and we need to times both sides by BC first of all. So we end up with BC sine 79 equals 29. And we're just going to divide both sides by sine 79. Just a bit of rearranging. So BC will be 29 over sine 79. And when you do that in the calculator, you get 29.542, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so 
Next thing we need to figure out is um, angle BCE. So where are we? This angle here. And to work that out, we're just going to take uh, 79 away from 90. So angle BCE is 90 take away 79. And that's going to be 11. So we know this is 11 degrees here. And we have enough information now to work out CE because we've got this triangle here and we've got this length here, the BC, and we've got this angle here. So we've got enough information now. So uh, we're going to look for length CE. We're going to first of all, label the sides. So we've got the opposite here the hypotenuse opposite the right angle here and the adjacent here. So this hypotenuse is now an adjacent. Uh, we're not using the opposite at all, but we are looking for the hypotenuse. So let's do our, our little um, triangles now, find out which one we're using. Um, so we're not using O, so we get rid of sine and tan and it's going to be a cos. So it's going to be cos 11 equals the adjacent, which is the BC value we've just worked out, over the hypotenuse, which is CE. Now, hopefully you've realized um, from when we did it with the sine thing here, that actually we can just swap these two things over. So we can have it as CE equals 29.542, blah, 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 over cos 11. Okay, then we put that into our calculator and we get the answer of 30.095 blah 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 and it wants it to one decimal place so that will be 30.1. Something we know about rectangles is opposite sides are equal so these two will be equal. And these two will be equal. And you notice now that we've got um, simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is get the coefficient of the y the same. And I'm going to do that by multiplying everything in the second equation by 3. So we get 6x plus 9y equals 123. And I'm just going to write in the first equation underneath because with simultaneous equations we work downwards. Now looking at the signs, they are the same, and the s in same is the s in subtract, so we're going to subtract going downwards. We're just going to subtract going downwards. So 6x take away 3x is 3x. 9y take away 9y is nothing, which is good, that's what we need. And then 123 take away 93 is 30. We're going to get our solving lines in, and we're just going to divide by 3 both sides. So we've got x equals 10. So we know what x is, but we need to find out what y is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one of the equations. Uh, I could pick the 2x plus 3y equals 41, and just substitute the value of x in. So 2 times, instead of x, it's times 10, plus 3y equals 41. So it would be 20 plus 3y equals 41. Get my solving lines in. And we're going to take away 20 both sides. So we've got 3y equals 21. And then we're going to divide by 3 both sides. If I don't run out of room. So y equals 7. So we've got x equals 10, y equals 7. Now I could um, check that with the first uh, equation as well. So 3 times 10 is 30, seven to, uh, 9 times 7 is 63, 30 plus 63 is 93. So we know we've got it right. So we're going to first of all draw a tree diagram for this information. You don't have to, but it is um, easier to understand what's going on. And so the first choice will be um, the first pick. It'll either be male or female. And the second choice will be the same, male and female.
And looking at the questions, um, there are three male names in the hat and five names in total. So the fractions for the first one will be three over five. If there's three male names, there'll be two females. Now, if we've picked a male name already, there'll be two left and four left in total. If we've picked, uh, if we haven't picked a female, there's still two females, but there's four left in total. If we picked a female, there'd still be three males and only four left in total, but there'd only be one female left. One female name left and four left in total. Okay, we're looking for the probability that the genders of the names are different. So looking at the outcomes, the outcome here would be male, male. That's not what we're interested in. Here would be male, female. We are interested in female, male. We are interested in and female, female. We're not interested in. So we're not interested in these ones. And the way that tree diagrams work is as you go along the um, tree, um, any fractions you go across, you multiply together to find the outcome. So this will be 3 over 5 times 2 over 4. And I realize I could cancel 2 over 4, but I generally cancel at the end. So 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 4 is 20. We're going to do the same with the other root. So 2 over 5 times 3 over 4. So 2 over 5 times 3 over 4, 3 quarters. That would be 6 over 20. Now we're looking to see whether it was male and female or female and male. And the word or in probability means add. So it would be 6 over 20 plus 6 over 20. And this is the probability of different. Uh, which will be 12 over 20. Now 12 over 20 will cancel to 3 over 5 or 3 fifths. First thing we need to do is find out what 10% of the 109 is. So we're just going to multiply by 0 0.1 and that gives us 10.9. So what we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract this from 109. So we're going to do 109 take away 10.9 which gives us 98.1 then we're going to do 109 plus 10.9 which will give us 119.9 so our error interval is between 98.1 and it says to use T and 119.9 so we've got Billy and James and Sam and James collects 20% more sand than Billy. So we've got James and he's plus 20%. And Sam collects 60% more sand than James. That's 60%. And you'd think you just add the two. Obviously, it's not going to be that easy for three marks. So the answer is not 80. What we've got to do is find the multipliers for each of these. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with 100%, add the 20%, and that would be 120%. Then we're going to get the 120, divide it by 100, and that gives us the multiplier, which would be 1.2. So the multiplier from um, Billy to James is 1.2. So whatever, however much um, Billy has, if we times it by 1.2, we get James's amount. Do the same for James to Sam. So start off with 100%, add 60, it's 160%. Then just make that a decimal, so uh, 160 divided by 100, 1.6. So if we multiply anything by 1.6, it will increase it by 60%. Now it says by what percentage is the amount of Sam, sand collected by Sam greater than uh, the amount of Billy? So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with Billy being 100, 100%. Okay? We're going to times it by the 1.2 and then times it by the 1.6 and find out what the final um, percentage is. So when we do that, we get 192. So we started off with Billy's 100. We just made that up. but it's, It just makes the maths nicer, nicer to use. And we ended up with Sam having 192. 
well, what is 192 as a percentage increase of 100? Well, the reason we picked 100 is we can clearly see that it's gone up by 92%. So our answer is 92%. The parts of a box plot are that the lowest value is on this side here. The lower quartile is this bit here. The median is this bit here. Upper quartile and then the highest value. So the um, the median is this part here, and we can see that is at 23. So the median is at 23. When we draw vectors, the top component of a vector is how far right, and the bottom is how far up. So we're going four right and two up. So I'm gonna just plot a point on our graph, and I'm gonna jump four to the right, one, two, three, four, we're going to go two up, one, two, and our end coordinate is going to be here. So we're going to just join these up with a straight line. The direction is, well, we start at the bottom left and we end at the top right. So the direction is this way, and it says to label it A, so A. To find the distance or displacement on a velocity time graph, we're actually going to find the area underneath the graph. And to do that, we're going to split the graph into two. And we've got the um, trapezium on the left-hand side, and we've got this rectangle on the right-hand side. So to work out the area of the trapezium, we're going to do half A plus B times the height. And the two parallel sides are on the left and the right. So it's going to be half times um, this part here, which is 40, plus this point here, which is 160. And then the height is actually the width. So the height is this bit here, so that's going to be times 2. Those will cancel out the half and the times 2, so that would be 200. And uh, similarly, to work out the area of B, just length uh, width times length so that's going to be uh, three wide and again 160 tall so three times 160 which would be 480 and so we need to work out the total area and we do that just by adding the two together so 200 plus 480 which will be 680. When we add fractions or integers and fractions, we need the denominators of the fractions to be the same. And when we've got an integer, we just convert it to a fraction. And here we've got 9k, and we need to convert that to a fraction that is over k plus 9. And the way we do that is we get the 9k, and we times it by k plus 9, over k plus 9 and effectively k plus 9 over k plus 9 is just 1 so we're doing 9k times 1 so we're keeping it the same we're keeping it as 9k so what we do um, when we times a, in, or a, a 9k or a term by a fraction is we times the top the numerator of the fraction so it's going to be 9k brackets k plus 9 and all of that over k plus 9 Expanding the brackets, we get 9k squared plus 81k over k plus 9. And so what I'm going to do is just feed that back in here. And so we've got 9k squared plus 81k over k plus 9, which is just that 9k bit, plus 11 over k plus 9. And whenever we're in this situation here, we just add the numerators. So it's going to be 9k squared plus 81k plus 11, and all of that over k plus 9. And that will be our answer. So let's put that in our answer field.
Here we're told that y is inversely proportional to x squared, so we've got y is proportional to 1 over x squared, that's what inversely means. And we want to change that, that proportionality sign for an equals, and to do that we need to times the right-hand side by k. k represents a constant. Next step we're going to uh, put in x equals 7 and y equals 137.2 to find out what k is. So 137.2 equals k over 7 squared. Well, we know 7 squared is just 49. I'm going to solve that by timesing both sides by 49. And when we do that, we find that k is equal to 6722.8. Going to get that equation we wrote earlier, and we're just going to rewrite it. But we know what k is now. We know it's six seven two two point eight, and we're going to rewrite that to find out what x is when y is thirty four point three. So we're going to substitute the thirty four point three in, and there's a little trick here. If you've got the unknown at the bottom, what you can do is actually just swap these two over. And effectively what we're doing there is timesing both sides by x squared and dividing both sides by 34.3. So we've got x squared equals 6722.8 over 34.3. And then we want to solve it, so get our lines in, square root both sides. And when you square root, uh, that uh, fraction equals 196. Square root it, it will equal 14. So our answer is x equals 14. So we have the original y equals fx shown in the graph um, and it says it has a minimum at 1 minus 1 so it's this one is the black line here and we're looking to see the uh, new function the red function but we notice that actually it looks very similar it's a, it's a u shape uh, for what we can see it might not be a quadratic but it looks like a quadratic and we notice that the um, point at the bottom has shifted left one, two, three spaces. Now it's tempting to think that the new function will be f brackets x minus three. That would be what would be tempting to do. But when you're looking at uh, transforming graphs along the x-axis, it's actually the opposite of what you think. So the actual answer is f brackets x plus 3. So this one would be wrong. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMath is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams such as topic based papers, demon questions and mini mocks. If you like what we do please consider subscribing.